I heard somebody say, you know, ask for your favors before you need them. Mm -hmm. Meaning like, go ahead and put in that work, put in that time. So when I when I hit you, you're going to pick up the phone because I'm not always calling you about money. Mm -hmm. I'm not always calling you about what you got for me. I'm literally on some just checking in, how you doing, happy new year, all of this stuff. But when it is an opportunity to come up, hopefully you think about me. You know what I'm saying? And it's literally just, and it's literally just relationships and building. Like, I literally volunteered after I was already like in the game doing my thing. Let's get it popping. Yo, what's popping? You know what time it is? Your boy, Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. We here. I've been having um like pretty special guests to me. Over these last few weeks, um, I feel like I ain't say happy new year to you guys. So happy new year. This is going to be like the probably third or fourth episode into the new year. I think maybe five, six. I don't know, man. Y'all know we just elevating. Thanks for everybody that's tuned in. I, I really uh, appreciate you guys. But like I was saying, um, I've been having like really special guests to me lately. And what I mean by that is like people that I, I always love. I like, had a real genuine love for, you know, like sometimes you get into the work and you just work and you know what I'm saying we new, we meet new people and they dope but like it ain't nothing better than people that you already was locked in with and y'all growing together right this guest I'm talking about I mean when I first started hosting in the club and like in concerts and like shows he was one of the guys that I was looking up to hosting and like a lot of people don't know that you know what I'm saying but I mean he's been killing it in the host in the in the host game and then he started his own thing with the Ox Court Wars and he's just been elevating ever since. Then he was on TV. I mean, like, this guy's a special guy right here, man. Jake Dukes is in the building. What up, brother? I appreciate you, uh, brother. No problem, man. Everything man. I say, I mean, man. I ain't even really good with introductions. So. Man, happy to be here. Nah, you did well. No, you I did very well. I, I felt like I was uh, about to accept an award or something. So. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Yeah. Now, hopefully, it will be better than that if you get an award. You don't have to read some <laughs> things and read the accolades, you know what I'm saying? Like, five-time nominee type, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we got it. We got a couple of those. How you feeling though, bro? I'm feeling good, man. I'm feeling no. good. I've been begging you to get here for a while, so happy that nah, I, I, I met you. Don't lie like. Don't that. do that. You want to see the thread? You want to see the sex thread? Please show me. Bro, come on, man. I've been begging you to get here. Show me. Come on, man. Show yeah, me. Give me my phone. You nah, definitely ain't been begging me to get here. And that's all. It's all good. And no, nah, I'm gonna go ahead because I'll be I'll be showing receipts. That's all good. Because I really be in DMs. That's all so good. I understand. It's it's at least three texts. Boy, three that not ain't begging. nothing. What's begging? Since you don't want to show, I show you some shit. <laughs> you talking about? I can show you ten people. What's begging? Oh, how, how 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 many how many texts is begging? Like I said, I can show you at least ten people. You ain't seen begging. I'm really in the field. Okay. All right. I mean, since 2018, my boy. What are you talking about? <laughs> like you can read it for yourself. Yeah, I, mean, I respect it. All right, I respect about, it. Don't come here talking about I'm begging. You hit me three times, Wayne. The schedule ain't aligned. Like, come on. Like, you're like, I ain't hit you back or something. Like, come on. Cut the shit. Nah, I, I ain't even gonna hold you. Like, I hit him. I was like, bro, I think it's time for us to, like, start telling the story of Ox Court Wars and even just helping people, like, navigate in the college space. And the first time I hit you, you was like, I right, bet pull up this week. And I was like, oh, hey, that's that's solid. Right, Real then. solid. Yeah, yeah. A but, after the millions of views and stuff. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, like, that, because... Like I said, this is something that's real. But this was before all of this. You know what I'm trying to say? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. this ain't never gonna go away. Even even Respect. if everything stop, this ain't gonna stop. Yeah. I hope so. I don't know how you feel. You already know. I don't know. Come on, man. You're you a superstar. Know. I don't know. I ain't no superstar, I don't man. Know. The the thing is, like, I was just talking to um a videographer earlier today, and it's just like all of the accolades and stuff is cool, mm. but I got into it just to help people. Mm. So like I I, I want to get to a certain point to where it is nationwide fame and can't go in Walmart and all that. But I don't want to stay there. I just want to get there just so I'm connected with the right people that can you know give you a bag or put a check in somebody else's pockets. Honestly, mm. let's talk about that for a second because even like when I'm introducing you, like man, that's it's time you say you hit me like let's do the interview. It's time we start talk, telling the story of Ox Court Wars. Isn't it crazy how elevation and like growth happens? Because mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. Ten years ago, you wouldn't have thought you would have been th thinking, "Let's tell a story of how this hosting thing going." Yeah, I'm assuming. Yeah, I mean, I so bro, we've actually been actively putting together the Ox Court Wars documentary, mm -hmm. right? And so I was talking to my wife, talking about like what story we're looking to tell, right? Mm -hmm. And so I don't think you can tell the Ox Court Wars story without telling the story of Jay Dukes mm -hmm. because it just 
it's a natural progression into just your character and your integrity and how you can come up with anything and still have those same relationships. So with Ops Court Wars, the, the story really is just relationships and resources. Mm. So the relationships that we've built from undergrad over the years, hosting shows, step shows, talent shows, those same relationships catapult the Ops Court Wars into a conversation, you know what I'm saying, into a lane of its own. Before we get there, Talk to me. I feel like we're skipping around. You know, they say the best interviews be the people you're fans of. And like, I'm really like a fan, right? So I'm going to go back. I, I rarely do this, but I'm going to go back. What made you, like, how did you even get into hosting? Uh, so I, I really wanted to be a rapper, and I think I told you this before. I don't know. What you're oh, now I wanted to be a rapper, legit. Like I, like I had, like I got albums and everything. I feel like I don't believe you could rap at all. No, no, I can't. I'm not good at it, but I wanted to be a rapper. Okay, you know what I'm saying. So okay. like I was, okay. like I was more like a producer, like behind the scenes, like a Diddy, and then like I would like, like Diddy though. Ah, that's damn. That's, that's bad timing. Horrible time. I wasn't even thinking that. I was thinking like that's a stretch. I'm, I'm saying yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, I was I was that nice though. Like, but then since it was like my equipment, I would like just do a verse because it was my equipment. So okay. like, how would you tell me no? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so I was the one to kind of put it together. Like, yo, we're gonna use this instrumental, we're gonna do three verses, you gonna do sixteen, you gonna do eight, I'm gonna do four. You know what I mean? You just tell them you're gonna do four. No, for sure. Are they paying you? No, they they not they not paying me to be in the studio because we in high school. Okay, because like, like, if I'm paying you for studio time, like you ain't putting no 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 this, this is, no. this is super early. Like okay, this is right. this is in high school. Okay, not okay. even a, not even a real microphone. I had a handheld microphone. I put it through a blender and covered it with like a with like a, a piece of a white like a, a tank top to like have a pop filter. Man, so like about ingenuity. Yeah, nah, for sure. And then I put it, and I had a weight bench in my room. I hung it up on my weight bench, and that was the that was the photo booth. I mean the uh, the, the mic, mic booth. Yeah, damn. yeah. okay. So, so you wanted to be a rapper. So I wanted to be a rapper, like legit. And so when I so sophomore year when I pledged, they was kind of like, "This silly, and you suck." And so it so hosting really just stems from me being on stage and entertaining. Because if you see me host, you can tell I'm like an extra host. You either love me or you like, why this dude doing so much? I love it yeah, yeah, yeah. because it's like the opposite of me. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? So like, yeah. I, oh, like you always like kind of, you're drawn in by the opposite of you, especially if it's like doing well. But I thought you, you had got into comedy though, right? After I graduated though. The only reason I got into comedy was to make my hosting better. That's the only reason. That makes sense. Because I'm like, bro, I'm already telling jokes on stage, but I'm doing them in one liner. So in my mind, I'm like, let me just put them together and make a set. But then it didn't translate like I wanted it to translate. So I was okay doing stand up, but I was still a great host. So wait, how was hosting in college when you first started? What you mean? Was it a hosting culture? No, like how was it? Like how how, how was how it was going? I? Yeah, like how was it oh, going? I was killing. I was killing. Like I was hosting everything. So the thing was, um, just within my line, that was my like role. So like er one of my LBs, he would be the financial guy. My other LB, he would sell tickets, whatever. And then like me, they just knew to give me the microphone. I don't care if we got a party, if we're doing a cupolo, if we're doing a, a panel about health and fitness, mm -hmm. I want the microphone. And I was good at it. So was we, you always getting paid? No. How was like, not. like when you first started? Like, like we were still in school. I was still in school and we were like selling out the cupolos. Like on, so we were just a popular chapter on campus. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So of course, like the bros. So we were super popular. We were selling tickets. We were selling out like 1,500 tickets. They might've been $2 at the time we in college, but like everybody was coming to these cupolos and I was the host of them. What was your first check from hosting? How much was it? Uh, My first significant check was like- No, what was your first check? I think it was like two thousand. That was your first check. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna hold you. And and this and this is how I know. This is how I know because out of school, like my manager at the time was my theater was my theater professor that was still in school. So when I graduated, I asked her because she was the only one close enough to entertainment. And so I got a uh, book to host Coastal Carolina's uh, MPAC Step Show. This is your first check. This is my first check, right? And but the reason the reason I didn't know my value yet was and I told you this before the reason I didn't know my value yet is because they said yo how much you gonna charge us to host our show I see you doing you know shows at your school and all these other conferences and stuff I say just shoot me two I was thinking two hundred my my manager at the time called me back and was like what the heck you doing for these people why are they paying you two thousand to host the show I was like what you mean and she was like they said they gonna pay you two thousand dollars and send over the contract. 
And mm. I was like, take it. Cool. <laughs> so that was the conversation. I said two, and I was thinking 200. They assumed 2,000, and they paid me 2,000. That's like the total opposite. Like, you know what my first check was? $50. Yeah. And I had to drive like an hour and a half away. Yeah. So so here's the thing. Like, I, I came in the game very delusional, mm. right? And so that's why I couldn't even really hold a job or work anywhere because the numbers just wasn't adding up to me. I was like, bro, if on average I can get 2000 to host a show and on the low end I can get 1500 I might as well stack them. Mm. I'm going to stack these show checks versus working, you know what I'm saying, work versus like clocking in in the office. How much do you contribute this to – did you you go, you go went to school down south? Yeah, I went to Cleveland. How much do Cleveland, you – Cleveland, Orange, South Carolina. How, how much do you contribute the bag and what you were hosting for the environment that you was in as far as going to school down south? What's what's the parallel? What you trying to say? I ask that because I feel like a lot – like that's the culture, HBCU culture is down here. Oh, yeah. Right? So you have a lot – like it's – when you do step shows, Greek is 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 super huge. large, huge yeah, down yeah. here, right? So like, even me, I come down south and I host the gigs. I'm like, damn, these mo- it's like, I mean, I think I did a show at like Louisiana. I forgot the school it was a white school. Southern? No, nah, it was like University of Louisiana, something okay, like that. Okay. And I mean, it was a st- it was a Greek show, but it, it was like crazy. a stadium. I'm like, yeah, yeah. what the hell? Yeah, yeah. Whereas though, like up north, like we might get the right side of the bleachers, and it still might be like. Maybe five thousand or something, yeah, right? That's a yeah, lot. Like, yeah, yeah. but down south, it really be like, I'm like, damn. Nah, I mean, the, the the numbers are crazy, but you can't say that all because Howard still got a crazy step show. Hampton still got a crazy step show. Keep going. You know what I'm saying? Keep going. Come on, like you just named two schools, <laughs> like, but but I'm still saying they're still up north and it's crazy. And, but you're saying just in comparison to. Every step show being insane down south. <laughs> you can name them like 10 right off the top right now. I get it. So wait, how did you get into... So this is your first check, 2000. You still undergrad? No, no. I just graduated. So that was my first show out of school. So you wasn't getting paid in school? I wasn't getting paid in school. We was just rocking out. I was just getting that experience. But like I told you, like I, 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 document, I went back and thought about every single show I hosted. So by the time I graduated, I had a whole resume and a whole full list of shows as if I was already a professional. Mm. And so when somebody was like, yo, I want you to host our show, but have you hosted anything before? I would submit this full list of shows to them. And at the time, it might have been like 12 shows, but I I outlined every single one. So I was like, yo, this date I hosted um, a talent show at this school at this whatever, whatever. I mean, what made you do that? uh, I knew that experience speaks for you. How? I have no clue. I, I Honestly, I have no clue. I wish I knew the answer to that. I just knew experience speaks for you. So, like, creating that pro- creating that portfolio was important to me. I got a real portfolio now, but at the time, I really just had to think back to say, man, I'm going to put on this list every time I touch the microphone so that they'll look at me and say, oh, yeah, he done this before. Sure, mm-hmm. let's give him a shot. That's insane. Yeah. I never, like, I'm listening to you. I'm like, bro, I ain't right. <laughs> Now. <laughs> like, bro, like this is crazy. So even then, were you keeping in contact with the people that was booking you already, or no? At that uh, moment, when you first got well, out of school, when I first got out of school, everything that we I was hosting was just undergrad stuff. It was just stuff for the chapter. Mm-hmm. So yeah, of course he was, you know, in contact. Okay, because it was okay. yeah, just a brush. All right. So you get out, you make two thousand dollars. From when? When did you go from your two thousand dollars at the school to doing what was it, Jiho? Yeah, I did. I did. I did C I A. I I did G-Ho once. I, I did bad at, at G-Ho. I can't wait to go back. I did. I didn't. I didn't do well. You did G-Ho one time. I the one the time I see you when they gave the McDonald's check away. Oh, uh, you saw my C I A. C I Okay. C-I-S. Yeah. So G-Ho is North Carolina A and T. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I did North Carolina A and T. I uh, I think I was still young in the game at the time. I didn't do well as I wanted to. So I can't wait to go back and kill the show. I can't wait. But C I A. They gave me a shot a couple of times. Rocked out. That was always. How much they paid you for that? How much they pay you, man? I mean, see, so look, so you got you got some you got some shows that's gonna give you a bag, some shows gonna give you the opportunity. See, I see, I double A showed love, but I will say it wasn't as as like the same check as like a school that's bringing me in. So I, I gotta you know just be honest about that. Yeah. Easy, bro. 
But the thing is, CIAA, you put it on your resume. So like you it, were still young doing CIAA? Like that was young J. Dukes in, in the host? I'm going to say relatively young. Because cause think about it. Like I'm old now. I'm th- I just turned 36. But I graduated 2010. And so all these opportunities are coming like right as I'm getting out of school. They're just coming back to back. They're like, oh, that's the that's the that dude that at hosts least everything. 2014. It's still four years after I graduated. Four years as you hosting though. That's pretty decent experience. That's yeah. really good. So Cause I, I think like this is my first year hosting. I'm looking at you. You know, this is crazy how life works. They say that's why you can't compare yourself. <laughs> you can't compare your progress to somebody's like right then and there. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I forgot the exact term, but whatever. I say that because like I'm, I remember coming out of school and I'm looking at you like, nah, I can do this. I can do this. Man, you've been in the game four years. I just started like six months ago. I'm like, bro, because that's the biggest stage in, in HBCU at that moment. Yeah. Damn. Nah, but yeah, I'm, I ain't going to hold you. Like hosting, grinding for a while, and I always wanted to like be a real host and not just an announcer. Facts. So like I've always like did the research and I've always like literally just sat and watched people, studied people, and was like what I would have done differently. Or he missed the opportunity here. I'm going to take this opportunity when I get a chance to host, right? Mm-hmm. He didn't connect with the crowd here. What happened? Oh, the DJ missed. All of that. So everything is a huge melting pot of, like, how do we entertain the audience? Because in our in our fields and in our role, our only job is to make sure the audience has fun. Mm-hmm. That's our only job. And if the audience are not ha- is not having fun, you did not do your job that night. Yo, this episode is sponsored by Manscaped. Listen, if your lady's on go, but your meat got a fro... Yo, this episode is sponsored by Manscaped. Listen, don't use the clip as you use on your face or on the head below your waist. Yo, this episode is sponsored by Manscaped. Listen, fellas, you want that jumper like Steph Curry? But your nuts is fairy? But nah, this episode is sponsored by Manscaped. Manscaped.com. Use promo code JHill for 20% off. They're going to give you a, the, the man bag. You know what I'm saying? When you're traveling, put all your grooming needs in the man bag. You don't got to carry it in your book bag. You don't got to be all over the place. You feel what I'm saying? They got the nose trimmer. Listen, man, some of y'all nose is disgusting out here. Get you a nose trimmer. For real. This shit is disgusting. Some ball deodorant for when you out and about. You about to get it on. Put that ball deodorant on. Smell fresh. Brand new. And of course, the lawnmower 5. Make sure you holler at my guys at Manscaped. J-Hill promo code. J-Hill, one word. 20% off and free shipping. Wherever are you from originally? Spartanburg, South Carolina. South Carolina. You never had... Did You You didn't grow up in your... Like, at the college, you was you was out of South Carolina, I'm assuming. Uh, what you mean? Like, was you growing up in, in South Carolina? Like, and yeah. when you in college? Well... So Claflin is probably like two hours away from Spartanburg. After you graduated, did you go back? Mm, yes. So I'm, I tried to move to Atlanta. I ended up getting sent back home. You know what I'm saying? And then I stayed at home at the crib for a while. And then I moved back to Atlanta in like 2015 and told my mom I'm not coming back. All right, it's five it years out. after you graduated. Yeah. So when you were in South Carolina, do y'all have like a big party scene? Uh, I'm just trying to understand something real quick. No, nah, I mean it. It's parties, but it's not like a huge party scene. Like I, like the thing is, I admire what you do because I'm not good as a club host, and that's where I'm trying to go. Because like, it's funny because, like, it's like the Spider Man meme. Because I'm looking at you. Even then, I didn't understand what I had in yeah. hosting the big events because yeah. I was so submerged in wanting to be popular in my city. Yeah. Right. And yeah. then the people in my city, like you know, the college kids. You got two. You got the college kids, and then you got the. The, the the party guys, like the cool guys, like yeah. they ain't really giving the college DJ a real opportunity, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like they ain't really doing that. So when I got into the club, it was like, yeah, I'm the man. Cause like, yeah, I'm a college nigga and I'm hosting the club and I'm yeah. like that, right? Yeah. But I I didn't understand what I had with the events far as the money, of course. I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna tell I think I think the grass is out. People always say the grass is greener on the other side, because I still don't have a centralized fan base to this day because we do because like my bread and butter has been colleges so mm. everybody is sprinkled all over the place so to be known from Baltimore mm. is fire like people know that I'm from Spartanburg but I, I didn't build any type of fan base in a central location so I missed out on that opportunity so now we're chasing it from living in Atlanta and doing different things but it's like damn bro like you 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 got a whole city that you put on your back Mm. So now that people that's in your space, that's like, man, you ever heard of Jay Hill? Yeah, that's my dog, mm. right? 
That's like, crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like all of our fans are literally sprinkled all over the earth. And so you might got two here, two there, whatever. So with the TV show gave us a little bit more, you know, FaceTime or whatever. But yeah, man, it's a it's a it's a grind because we didn't come up from I'm going to plant my flag here and grow from here. It's crazy. I didn't even think of it like that. I was just like this club is w- was lit. Like, cause yeah. this is people I'm around. I'm like, I'm, I'm lit. I'm trying to be lit. I didn't even think of it like that. But I'm, I do have a question for you. Yeah. You want to trade? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. You want to trade? <laughs> Yo, I mean, I mean this shit, we can trade. The grass ain't always green. You me. All right. So, all right. Before we, all right. Cool. You gave me two different segues. Let's go into the marriage thing first. You, how did that even happen? I feel like that was random as hell. Like. You just end up on TV, you and your wife, congratulations. And like, like I feel like that was left field for me. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, so so honestly, bro, they literally just hit us up on Instagram. Like they sent us a DM and saying, hey, we're doing a show. We like your posts. We see the love that y'all have, which y'all like to come on the show. And I, and I screenshotted it. I sent it to my wife. And then she was like, this is fake. Don't worry about it. Mm. And, I, and I was like, I don't think it's, well, I, I didn't know if it was fake or not, so I went and did some research, and, and I pulled up the production company, and I said, oh, baby, I don't think this fake. What's the name of the show again? It was Put a Ring on It. Put a Ring on <clears> It. So it was on season two, Put a Ring on It. What did that do for your career? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What? Talk, talk to me. Nah, I mean, my, my thing is, uh, one, one of the OGs, you know Fred Witt, so uh, Terrence J guy, he mm-hmm. told me, he said, you can't control the edit, right? Oh, yeah. You know so, that. Yeah. And and so when I'm when I'm on the show, I'm enjoying it because I'm like, yo, so this is cool. Like I like the whole concept of it. Like you had to date other people once a week or whatever. Like you know what I'm saying, to see if you and your if your current relationship is as strong as you think it is, mm-hmm. right? You had to go to counseling. The counselor, when we had our one on one sessions, it was kinda it was lit. I was like, all right, cool. So like she's really helping me think about some different things, giving me confidence, all of that. But then we go back and we watch the show, and I'm like, Ah, uh, like oh, you, you was flirting, you was going crazy. <clears throat> was I? I don't know. I ain't watching. Oh, okay, good. All right, good. <laughs> like, nah, but uh, but nah, it, like so you can't you can't control the edit, and I'm looking at it, bro, and like they and like I'm looking at the comments, and they just they killing, they and, eating me alive. And you right? was trying to really have, you was really like having fun on these dates, type. I w- I wasn't really having fun. No, I'm I'm gonna I'm tell you I'm gonna tell you the part that got to me the most. Right, the part that got to me the most was. The people that were in the comments, they really didn't know who I was. Mm. And then they were they were taking the edit and making that real life. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And so and I'll give an example. Like nigga, they they just they had a field day, bro. Like they like every time you do a show, it's a certain storyline, a certain story that they want to tell. Go back to what you you said, I'll give you an example. And you stop. Give me the example. Oh, my example was like I'm a very emotional like guy. And I don't shy away from that. Like I'm very transparent, very vulnerable. So I end up like crying like three different times on the show. Like legit, like speaking to my soul. Oh, like uh, trying to work through some stuff, right? With, with your therapist. No, I mean, like it's me, it's me and my wife. Okay. And we're talking to the therapist, but like on three different times. I mean, okay, cool. Here's the thing. It was like three different times throughout the season. They put it all on the second episode. <laughs> <laughs> and so now the second episode, before you even know who I am, is like, why is Buddy crying the whole show? Damn. And so it's like, so it's stuff like that that I was like, ah, oh. but the thing is, I can't sit here and lie and say that I didn't cry. I I was, I had some moments. Mm-hmm. I had some moments on the show, but they put them all on the second episode. So even before you got to know who I was, it was like Man, this weekend on this, it's all, yeah. So wait, so what was the picture, what was the narrative that they painted of you, I guess? Is this sensitive, buddy? Uh, Well, the, the narrative was sensitive, jealous, insecure. Um, and then my, my wife, corporate, has it all together. And guy that's trying to still figure it out, but, you know. That it was that. Thinking back on it, would you do it again? Would I do it again? Uh, probably. Did it do anything for? Cause like that's what I said, for me again. 
like sometimes I feel like sometimes when you cool somebody, you overlook what's right in your face. And what I mean by that is like I wasn't really tuned into the show because I didn't yeah. like I know you. I didn't even like, yeah. that's congr- that's dope. Congratulations. And I, so for me, it was like left field. And like even now, you don't ask score words. I'm just like, where does that even fit in J? Yeah. Duke's well, fit? so when, so when we talk about career, like like honestly, I didn't I didn't go. We didn't go on the show to like get a boost for our career. Mm. Like we literally went on the show because we watched the first season and it was like chill. It was literally going to counseling, working through some stuff. Everybody got their stuff, so we were having conversations. And I'm like, bro, we should really just like go on the show and and figure this stuff out in front of the camera on a reality tv show yeah i mean of course bro yeah I'm, we was tripping on that but the decision was we gonna go on the show and kind of just you know work through some of this stuff because we we solid we know we know we locked in and let's just figure it out we solid we know we locked in so bet let's let's do the reality tv show to pull us apart fuck it let's do it yeah, I, we didn't think it was gonna be a pull us apart type <laughs> situation. Like, like, the, like the first season was chill it was just one of those like you know, let's have some tough conversations, but we know that we solid, so we're gonna be straight. Okay. Right. But but I will say, so we didn't go on it to give me a boost for my career. Okay. But I, what I will say is it did help me a lot because when you when you have my wife who is like very corporate, top sales, Fortune 500 company, all of this stuff, and then they the, they didn't say entrepreneur, they didn't say entertainer. The only thing they said was wife corporate got it all figured out dating an expiring comedian and i was like oh geez right so what it did do for me personally that's crazy is it is it it put a battery in my back mm. so when i say would i do it again yeah i would do it again I, I but i'm not gonna hold you like it like looking at the comments it depressed me bro mm. like the first two episodes we like literally like Went on YouTube, pulled up all the reviews, was watching all the comments and everything together. But just it was just negativity after negativity after negativity, and I just couldn't take it. Mm-hmm. So I I actually had to stop looking at the comments. Like I literally was depressed for like a couple of months, like throughout rewatching the show. Back that was that was your first time on camera. Uh, first time on a show of that magnitude. Cause I've I've like made some movie appearances, but that was the first time. Like, cause and the thing is, it's on own. It's on Oprah Winfrey Network. So I'm thinking people ain't watching it. Mm. I'm like, oh yeah, we can do this and just fly by. You know what I'm saying? Get a little check. We'll be straight. We locked in. We know we good. But people watching the show, like even the bros, it's like, yo, who is the crying bro? Mm. Like, who? <laughs> like where did he pledge at? Who's his LBs? <laughs> and I'm like, yo, like they're really watching the I'm show. I'm surprised you ain't. You wasn't the uh, Michael Jordan emoji. Man, like, like man, <laughs> like that they had they had me uh that bad off. But that's a, that that's even what my wife said. So you gonna be the new uh, Michael Jordan crying emoji? That's cr- it's crazy because like, <laughs> it's it, like it, it just tells you as like you really gotta enjoy the process. And, and this is like separate but the same. And what I mean by that is like for me, I remember my first time feeling that mm. it wasn't on national TV. Mm. It was like on a YouTube video, and I look back, and the video still I probably it probably got like eight thousand views. Wow! But it was like a couple comments that critique my work, yeah. and it hurt like yeah. bad. It was like, who puts music over an interview? That's dumb as hell. Yeah. I can't even hear what, like. So, but it hurt. I'm like, damn, like shit. I ain't because I didn't know. Yeah. And I say that to say from then on, I knew not to pay the, the comments no mind. Like I knew that all no, jump. I had I had to get there, and I, and I'm a and. I'm going to tell you this because this is the part that bothered me the most, and I ain't even going to hold you. It was, I know I have a lighter voice, right? Mm. And so people that didn't know me, they was even critiquing my voice. Like, just just listen to this man's voice. He probably, he don't want LaRonda. He probably don't even want no woman. It's, he probably he probably play on the other side of the field. And, I, and I'm like, what are y'all talking about? It's like, mm. do y'all really know me? Mm. Like, do y'all? And I was, I, I, I was tripped. And then, so so here's what, here's the part that was like just really profound for me, right? Like in those moments, I'm like, bro, you know what? I'm a solid dude. I got a very, I got a very solid queen. So I'm deciding to stay solid because think about, and you, and we can go, we can dive into this. You tell me what you think. But when you got like gay rumors, the only way for a black man to combat gay rumors is to have hella hoes. Unfortunately, like, unfortunately, in our community, unfortunately, and I'm like, bro, you know what? I'm not about to go there with y'all because I don't even have nothing. You know what I'm saying to prove, but. Every time somebody gets hit with the oh, buddy don't even like women. What you mean? I'm 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 killing this one. I'm killing this one. I got this baby mama, this baby mama, and I'm like, bro, that's like it's immature and it's silly. So I'm like, yeah, you just gotta like they just gotta see what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like once people start doing their research or oh, 
oh, I do know Buddy Buddy really solid. Like, he, you know what I mean? I'm like, I can't even, you know, let that bother me because it's, it's no way to be like, y'all are wrong because look at me. Like, whatever. Y'all got to just got to let them talk. How is that? Um, how does your wife take that at that moment? Ah, the wife, family, everybody is like, now, baby. Whatever. But y'all still living together. We can't so we can't just brush past this. Y'all living together. We're living I'm together. A, we watching the show together. These feelings we, are real. And we right? going through we going through this together, right? And and it's and it's hard because this is how I know my wife even more solid. Cause she being empathetic to me, but her comments are great. Mm. This is Michelle Obama we're looking at. And so she's so she's kind of like do, 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 do. But mm-hmm. she's but she's like in it with me to kind of be like, it ain't really like don't let it bother you. It ain't that deep. I understand how you know what I'm saying it, it could come off or how it, it can make you feel. But but not even that, like her being empathetic to you. I'm I'm wondering how's the relationship because when you go through things, as we all do, men especially, when we're emotional, sometimes we wear it on our, we wear our emotions on our sleeve. Yeah. Right. And I we know start, I do. Right. And we start to, to treat people the way we shouldn't treat them. Right. We start mm. to act a little differently because our insecurities. And I'm wondering how did that affect and how did that play a toll on your relationship because of how you was feeling inside, even if you couldn't even if you wasn't able to pinpoint it to that specifically at that moment, looking yeah. back on it. Well, one one thing that I wasn't as solid for in that time, right? I I do feel like I took certain opportunities to kind of be like, oh y'all, listen to this. She yelling at me. Mm. Or like if I'm if I'm if we in a meeting or something and she in the background kind of giving feedback or something and maybe I got it on speakerphone or I got it on mute or whatever, I might unmute it and be like, Yeah, man, like like my 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 girl my girl in here going off, y'all, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. And it's just like I was trying to take opportunities to show like she ain't as perfect as you think she is. Mm. And I'm like, that's messed up, bro. Like this, like this my queen, this who I'm rocking with, regardless of how the world perceive me or not, like it doesn't, it doesn't make me shine any brighter to try to attempt to dim her, to like dim her light. Mm. And that was fucked up. Mm. Like, and so I had to be like, okay, stop doing that. Because I decided to be with somebody who is amazing and who the world actually sees is amazing. You at know what, what I'm saying? At what point or when did you come to that realization that that that, that was you what you was doing? Uh it's a it took me a minute. Mm. It took me a minute because I was I was really going I was really dealing with some stuff. I was like, man, like everybody thinks she's so perfect and they think I'm so flawed. And I was like, man, like even like everybody got got something. But I was like, bro, that's not. That's not for me to try to to try to out her on some like that's that was that was fucked up. Mm. That was some that was some real bullshit that I was subscribing to on some like man y'all y'all got to see how how we perfect for each other cuz she flawed too. Mm. And I was like, "Bro, that don't 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 play it like that now. Don't How what was we, you, what we doing?" Okay. So how did you get there though? Like how like what was some was it some intentional actions? Was it just a like a a, a come to life moment? Like I, how was you able I, to get to understanding that that was wrong? I think I think it was a come to life moment because at the end of the day, even though everybody got their stuff, she's been amazing to me. You know what I'm saying? Like she's been literally amazing to me since the day that she that we met. So what was the come to life moment? Uh the come to life moment was just like, what are you doing, bro? But how did you get there? Like, what made you ask yourself that question? Jay Hill, I don't know, I, bro. No, I'm asking you that because <laughs> no, I, I I say why. I asked that because so many of, of men go through that. Yeah. And sometimes you go through that and you don't even know you're going through that. Yeah. Right? So if you are able to pinpoint when you was going through it, how you got over it, and what made you what well, made here, you see it, maybe the, somebody can look at themselves in a the mirror and be like, man, I don't want to be that person. And Jake Deuce got over it like this. Let me try this. I feel it. Here's the thing. I, I don't even know at what moment I got over it. But what I did think about was at the end of the day, if nobody got my back, I know she's going to have my back. Facts. So why in the world am I not having hers? Mm. Like, I, like, I know that for a fact. Like, like I, I think I put on Instagram the other day, like, like this is my rider, this is my, this is my dog. So, like, if you if you don't see her beside me and you hear fire, and, like, something, we got an issue, like, I promise you it ain't fireworks. Because mm. mm. okay. she, hey, she going she gonna to go all out for me. And I, and, I, and I was just, I was, I blanked out. And I was on some like, yeah, bro. I mean, y'all, y'all gotta see that she, 
know what I'm saying? She got flow too. Mm. How, was, like, she, bro, how was she? How was she dealing doing? with that at that moment? In those moments, how was she dealing with? It? Uh, she, she knew how messed up it was, and she would give me that energy like like word. And I was like, "What you mean? I'm I'm just showing showing." And and, she, and then like I had to like real, realize like, "Oh yeah, mm. yeah." Like I'm I'm literally trying to like make myself feel better, but in doing that, it's like. Let me bring you down a little bit so people will know that we both human. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So, yeah, that was, I, I I had to, like, really understand what that was and look in the mirror and be like, bro, you either, you, either, you either riding as hard as she riding for you or you need to get out. Mm. That's real. What, it, you were saying that your uh, wife was, like, climbing the corporate ladder. She's still working corporate now? Mm-hmm. She don't have to, but she wants to. That's what I was gonna ask you. <laughs> that, that's what I was getting to. I was getting to that. I was getting to that. Um, how does that feel? Cause like again, we friends, we talk. Yeah. Like, you one of my mentors and stuff. And we talk here and there, but every time we talk, it's good conversations. It was a time where, man, you know, you was hosting and you, like sometimes they say, like, what well, entertainers and hosts, what happens is like you have a really high season. And mm-hmm. even entrepreneurs, I'm assuming, I don't know. I'm new to this, right? So you stack during that season to pay the bills for the entire year. Mm-hmm. It was a time where that was running dry and you had to get a job. Mm-hmm. And you was like, it was tough. I remember you telling me. Mm-hmm. And to look at that J Dudes then and to to be able to say, she don't gotta work. Like, how was that? I mean, it's it's a great feeling, bro. And it's so here's the thing. I we had to we had to talk about a lot of times we talk about surviving and thriving, mm. right? And so as an entrepreneur, as an entertainer, once you get to survival, you think you okay, mm. right? You like, man, I'm not drowning no more. Like my head is above the water. I'm doing good, right? But how how can you how can you survive if you barely taking care of yourself with a family? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, so now I got I got a woman who. Loves nice things, right? And I'm proud of just surviving. Mm-hmm. And she like, nah, we ain't doing that. Like we literally, we have to thrive. We have to thrive, or it doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Cause I, cause I was thriving on my own. She's, t- she's. This is the energy she's giving me. I was thriving on my own. So you come along. You're supposed to be adding to what we got going on. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Instead of instead of me just being proud for being able to take care of myself. Cause as an inter- as an entertainer, as an entrepreneur, that's a big feat, bro. Like. Like I can pay my bills, my my bank account ain't in overdraft, and I'm on the road constantly. We good. Mm-hmm. But when you bring more elements into that equation, that ain't enough. Mm-hmm. So so like multiple businesses, multiple streams of income, and 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 I'm not gonna say that that I still ain't made missteps. Like if we if we being honest, like definitely, you know what I'm saying, like times to be like, okay, gotta figure this out. You know what I mean? But just to be able to be in a place that that I at least know that we have the formula. Even if the money ain't there, I know we got the formula. I know I can go get a bag tomorrow. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going I'm to I'm 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 pause on the relationship questions. I might have to bring y'all on out with shit. Like, I'm going to pause. I'm going I'm to... I'm 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 going to throw that oop for my other podcast. Okay. If you get a chance, make sure you check out the Gemini Scorpio podcast. The podcast with me and my wife have relationship conversations. I mean, real relationship conversations. We real transparent. I mean, we talk about real. Like, we raw. Like, we ain't talking about that. Like, love you. No, we getting into it. I'm going to say that. All right. Let's go back to hosting. Hosting, how did you go from, you you go from being this host, you lit, Mm -hmm. to Aux Court Wars? Uh, So, the dream was always to be on TV. Right. Mm-hmm. Everything that I've done since the beginning of my career was always to like be on a reoccurring like role acting. Mm-hmm. Right. So so the reality TV show was just a kind of like a little curveball to be like, oh, I guess it's something that we were talking about going to counseling anyway. Right. So I was going live on Instagram, just trying to build followers, all of this. But I was only getting like two people on the live. Mm-hmm. Right. So I hit my homie and was like, bro, let's just go on live and like play music back and forth and just see if we get like more engagement, right? Mm-hmm. Cause at the time Instagram was hating on you if you wasn't using all of the features. Mm-hmm. So you had to be going live, you had to be not only doing posts, but videos, reels, all of the stuff, right? And I just wouldn't get any engagement. So so I went on, we was playing music back and forth and the two turned to 20. And then, the, and then that 20 turned to like 200. We invited 
Like I challenged Rodney Perry to play. He played against me online. Um, I challenged like Spice Adams to play B Simone. And like now we're getting like a thousand plus people on the live and just like tuning in, just seeing us playing music back and forth. Talk to me about Ox Court Wars. Like, like, what is it for the people that don't know? Okay, yeah. So, uh, a if, lot. give me, don't give me the modest answer. Give me like the arrogant answer, so people can know. For the people that's watching that don't know. Oh, it's a live musical game show. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Going back and forth, playing music in a specific genre. We killing the college game right now. We really carved a niche. Um, we're in our own lane. So when it comes to like authentic like uh, engagement for like black and brown students, whether that's HBCUs or any other institution, like we're killing the game right now. We're doing 35 to 40 shows a semester, minimum 70 shows a year. Mm. And we started in 2018. And the people, the guests, come on, man, give me yeah, the Oh, yeah. I, mean, the we got, I need the arrogant we, we, got, we got special guests, you know what I'm saying, that pop out at every single show, whether we working with, you know what I'm saying, people from Wild and Now, uh, Conceited, Emmanuel Hudson, Hitman Holler, Darren Brand. We've even had like musical guests come through, like Cash Doll, Rob Fortnite, uh, Duke Deuce, like, like everybody else. And we have a show coming up February 15th at Virginia State University, and we got Bootsy coming through. Okay. So, I yeah, bet. so we're going crazy. We're going crazy. Okay, so you take this idea from IG Live, yes. and I'm curious to know, I'm pretty sure you know this in business, when it comes to naming something, mm -hmm. the importance of getting the business behind it mm -hmm. and taking it to the next level as far as that place. Because I feel like Ox Cold Wars, I feel like I heard that multiple times. So here's the thing. You've heard Ox Battles and you heard Ox Wars. <clears throat> You've never heard Ox Court Wars before we uh, I've never put it heard together. Ox Court, you're right. Yeah. Right? And so first it was going to be Ox Court Battles. But my homie, uh, actually one of our bros, E. Reigns, he went to uh, St. Aug. Um, e. Reigns was like, bruh, don't do Ox Court Battles. How about Ox Court Wars? Mm. And he like, he gave me the name. Mm. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. So I went to YouTube. I went to Google and like, Nothing that was listed was Ox Court Wars. Everything was Ox Court Battles. Everything was Ox Battles. Everything was Ox Wars, right? Mm -hmm. But nothing was Ox Court Wars. So that's the first time we ever put it together. Okay. And then so anytime you search it and you see Ox Court Wars, before around 2018, it's, it started with us. So you might see more now because we actually like made it made a bubble. Yeah, I asked that because like I'm pretty <clears throat> sure during the pandemic, I'm thinking like 2019, a lot of like a lot of ideas are going out there. Everybody yeah. like, man, let's do an Ox Wars. Like, let's do a like a Ox Core Battle, whatever. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, when you do it, I'm assuming you had to jump on it quick. Did you ever have anybody reach out to you like, man, that was my name, or like you stole nope. my stuff? So here's the thing. <clears throat> nope. <clears throat> Excuse me. Nobody ever like reached out to us from that standpoint. People like tried to like do it, and people mm -hmm. tried to like take it. And so early on, we had to just be like really like tight with our business and like we got a lawyer all of this so we had to like send out cease and assist to people like people like supported the brand so much that they would send it to us to be like oh y'all about to be you know what i'm saying at uh this school or that school and i'm like nah that's not us and they was like oh well they about to do it and so we would call our lawyer and be like that yeah hey tell them they can't do it and she'd be like all right i'll send you over a cease and assist to send to them that's crazy and so like it was a couple of couple of like entities that we had to send like cease and desist letters to like like early on because it was just it was a hot concept. And so the thing is you can't trademark an idea, but you can trademark a name. So you can't use Oxcord Wars. And we've gotten to the point that we have a tried and true formula to where we just feel very confident that we do this format better than anybody else. Mm. How was Cause you said a lot of this is a relationship that you had when mm -hmm. you was hosting. Yep. How did you build that catalog or those relationships? <clears throat> like when you hosting, you just get the number. Like let's stay con in contact. But a lot of these people leave. They don't keep the job forever. Well, a lot of times, like in the college touring space, people don't leave like the space. They might leave the university and just go to another university, right? So um, a lot of my relationships was built at NASAP. So National Association of Student Affairs Professionals, like Student Leadership Institute, uh, surround Memorial Day every year, like uh, SGA uh, members, mm -hmm. presidents, you know, advisors, all of these HBCUs go to this particular leadership institute. I was there. Yeah. And so so what I did, man, I was I was smart about it. I, I started volunteering. Like, and this was after I was already hosting, after I already had like a little bit of a name. I told them that I wanted to volunteer and they actually really put me to work. So it was funny to me because I thought that I was just like going to be like a, 
a figurehead. They'd be like, yes, I'm volunteering. But like they was like, yeah, you here to volunteer? All right, boom, take this box and walk it across campus to this uh building. Mm. And I was like, okay, right? Stayed in the dorm. This is after the hosting success. This is this is after CIAA. This is after everything. This is 2018. This eight is after years post graduation. Eight years post graduation. Professional killing the game, right? Um, so they're like, yo, take this box to it, and I, I did everything they asked me to do, and then so eventually, like, they was like started giving me like more responsibility. So now I'm the late night event chair for that, you know, leadership institute, and so obviously I do ops court wars as much as I can. But in 2018 is when we just, uh, I think I started volunteering at NASAP like 2016. Yeah, because so, I think I was Mr. Cop in 2018, I think. Yeah, 2018, I think I seen you. Yeah, I was already there. Yeah. I was already locked in. But it was it was literally just from service. And it was like, yo, I'm going to show y'all that I'm here to work. I'm here to help out wherever. And so now by volunteering, I'm in a group me with like 75 to 100 you know what I'm saying? Like student activity directors, vice presidents of like these HBCUs. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So now I'm like, yo, like I know y'all see me around campus helping out and stuff, but we also have Ops Court Wars. Would you be interested? Right? So that's how I actually got in there. You know what I'm saying? I, I, ain't, I ain't need no money. I ain't asked them for nothing. I volunteered my time. I went down. I uh, stayed in the dorm like everybody else, paid for my own gas, own travel, everything, and just said, I want to be in the same place with y'all to have these conversations. Was that the plan to do to come in and bring all school awards, or was it like why was you volunteering at this? Make it make sense for me. At the time, it was just hosting, right? So volunteering, at least I can get close to people and find out what their needs are from a hosting standpoint, mm. right? Like I, I like I literally can help out, like whatever I need to do. Like I'll I'll drive y'all around, I'll take y'all to Walmart. It don't matter. But when we leave here, I just want you to stay in contact with me. So now, because the thing is, people. I heard somebody say, you know, ask for your favors before you need them. Mm-hmm. Meaning like, go ahead and put in that work, put in that time. So when I when I hit you, you're going to pick up the phone because I'm not always calling you about money. Mm-hmm. I'm not always calling you about what you got for me. I'm literally on some just checking in, how you doing, happy new year, all of this stuff. But when it is an opportunity to come up, hopefully you think about me. You know what I'm saying? And it's literally just, and it's literally just relationships and building. Like, I literally volunteered after I was already like in the game doing my thing. This is so fire, bro. Cause like seeing it now, <laughs> like the viewers probably can't see it, but if you ever experienced it, you'll understand like it's special. Yeah, like, yeah. It, it is a, a moment. Appreciate like, you. So Appreciate to see you. you, like I volunteered to see it now. How yeah. many people you you uh staffing now? Like how many people on your on your payroll? Boom. How many think? How many people you think we got? Like at least thirty. Mm. At least, at least, th- like we got at least thirty contractors, like that that we rotate out. In you know what I'm saying, so it's it's a blessing because because the first time we did it in ASAP, it was thirty people, it was thirty students that came through. But I just saw the joy in their face, and I was like, oh, oh, I got something. Oh, mm-hmm. we going we going crazy. Like I already knew. Like I just knew from just that small sample size that I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Watch this. How would you explain the experience? Because I mean, you even like you had me come out host with you one time. Yeah. And I just like I just it was so different for me because it was like it's still a college atmosphere, so you gotta be like energetic, like you gotta, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like that ain't the club. It's like you gotta be like bouncing around and like with the kids. It's like yeah. how I would mean, you I, explain it? I would I would explain the experience like I used to say like it's uh Price is Right meets Lip Sync Battle, right? So if you end the building, you get a chance to play. I will say that it's not only for colleges. We started with colleges, but it's music. So I think it's for everybody. So once it starts to um, translate into the city and we can like appeal to that older demo, I think we going like super crazy. Like we going to do like city to city tours like ASAP. And You can and do that. I can yeah. see this at like a brunch. I can see this at like a a music specific party. For example, because like y'all have like with with um Oscar Wars, you guys have different categories where you're yeah. playing different type of music. You got the gospel section, you got the R and B section, you got the like trap section, something like that. I can even see it within one genre of music. Like I say, you have an R and B party. It can. Uh, I mean, I, I I think I think is I think it could be a standalone event as is, right? Yeah. Like we we cycle through six different genres in two hours, mm. right? And and we get to have more fun with like an older demo. Like at college, of course, you gotta. You know what I'm saying you you gotta keep it classy, mm-hmm. right? But like a like an older demo, a, tw- a twenty one and up, twenty five and up, or whatever, we can go crazy. Like an Oxcore Ward thirty and over type vibe. Whatever, you know what I'm saying? 
whatever. We we old enough to drink, we lit, we we, you know what I'm saying, we turning up, we doing, you know, we encouraging all the shenanigans. Like, yeah, bro, like once like once once we package it the right way for that 21 and up demo, it's over with. See, I'm thinking like Ox Core Wars 2000 edition. Like it could be R and B, it can be gospel, it could be different type of music, but we it's cycl- like just two thousand music. Through, we cycling through all the genres. And we going crazy. Like I'm telling you, like we're like we we have just hired like a new uh brand manager. And so we're we love the colleges, we appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? Like they really gave us like our footprint to know that we actually have something. But like I'm telling you, like this next wave and this next uh this next like level of like city to city tours, insane. I can see that. Kind of like Maybe not grits and biscuits. Like something like yeah. remember the uh Henny Palooza. I, re- I respect grits and biscuits. Yeah. Remember that? Like Henny Palooza. Do say Palooza. Yeah, all of that, bro. Like like salute the trap karaoke, salute the R and B only. Like all of those like live touring like musical shows. Like, I can see yeah. Like yeah, we we're going crazy. I can see that. Sheesh, dang, bro. No, wa- a- watch now. I'm telling you, like like I'm telling you, we're actively working on the documentary because this is the tipping point. Like we ha- we just complete we're in February, we'll just complete six years with Ox Court Wars, like in the business. Do you think they're gonna give you the bag? Like the college give you the bag? Uh, I, I think we have to invest our own money. That makes sense. so it's it's going it's going to be uh, you can't get booked. You, it got to be like you got to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to just buy the venue out and then like tell people to come through and, and watch what we do. How was um speaking of like the older crowd? How was Revolt for you? Because y'all did Revolt. Yeah, Revolt was dope. I mean, Re- Revolt always show love. Uh, I think that. The um, stage Revolt World, like the uh, what was Revolt, Revolt World. World? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like no, nah, Re- Revolt always show love. Like shout out to the Tavio, shout out to uh, uh, Jalisa. She actually booked us out there. Um, all the all of the people that Revolt, man, they showed us crazy love. Uh, I don't want to start naming names because I might miss somebody and mess up. But I I know China for sure, Corey for sure. Like um, everybody, Agana. You know what I'm saying people that's just like yo, like y'all really, really got something and we want to support y'all in any way that we can. Mm. So yeah. Like revolt always been dope. Yo, this is so far. I love it, bro. I really appreciate yeah. you, man. Um, I think, like I said, these are the conversations I enjoy because, like, it's things I'm really intrigued about. Yeah, yeah. So I ain't had to do no research. It was like it just felt so good. I ain't had to do no research. I, it felt good to just pull up and just <laughs> chop it out with my dog. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? What is it? What What are some things you trying to actively get out there? I guess because you did want to come interview. So, like, what are some things that I guess we didn't talk about? Yeah, I mean, I. I think that anybody like in entertainment space or trying to go to a next level in entertainment, you're going to have to figure out how do you stack your bread, right? Because mm-hmm. you're going to need money to invest. And I know everybody got their own path to how they want to do it, but the college touring space is really a space to like stack some bread. Like if you if you tell me that you, if you got a platform and I can package it and sell it to like college students, mm-hmm. I can get that done. I can get it across the finish line for you, even with you. Like, you can, we talked about this. You can do. Yeah, you never hit me for this daggone come show. Come on, bro. Don't do me like that. This interview that you told me to no, do. No, but like, I, I told you to also, shut up. See, that you fucking, <laughs> you messing with me. Like, I, but here, like, if you got a, if you got a, a program, if you have, like, uh, a platform that you can speak on, even about pod, about how to do a podcast, podcast one-on-one, if you talk about dance one-on-one, like, any, anything that you have a story to tell. Like, bro, I'm pretty sure that somebody in the college space has been through a similar, you know what I'm saying, situation, similar idea, a uh, similar thing. So I can package that for you and, like, get it across the finish line. And and we can get you some real money. And if it's the space that you, it's the space that you can stay in for years, like myself, or you can say, I'm going to take this money and invest and put it into what I really want to do. Mm. So you're saying you would, you would suggest people to invest in this college space? I do it all day long. I do it all day long. Like what? As far as like positioning people to get money with colleges. You know what I'm saying? So like I and, and the information is out there. I give anybody information. Like, like what? I, like so so uh, so, we... so NAC, we go to NACA as well. So NACA is the National Association of Campus Activity. So mm-hmm. www.naca.org, right? And that's where whether you are an artist, um, if you're a speaker, if you're a comedian, anything, you can go to this conference and be able to market yourself to like real college bookers that can put you in the space, put you live on campus and get you a bag. Just is this just entertainment though? 
no, not just entertainment. Still, sp- like, speaking, too. Like, if you're a motivational speaker. So you go to NACA. I'm trying to, like, what? Like, give me, like, you give me everything. Am you, I giving you, you bits and pieces? Yeah, nigga. Okay, you go well, to ask me the questions. Like, you go to NACA, and I'm, I'm just <laughs> going to NACA. I'm, what, I'm going to take the J. Dukes, right? I'm like, go to NACA, and I volunteer? Like, no, nah, no. Nah, so so NACA is different than NASAP, right? So mm-hmm. NASAP is for HBCUs. NACA is for, like, uh, tr- like traditional institutions right Mm -hmm. but what you do you it's two parts to it so you have the like the vendor village part where i can take my marketing materials and like and push myself Mm -hmm. hey i'm an artist i do x y and z Mm -hmm. boom i love to come to your school hey i'm a speaker this is my platform i would love to come to your school but you also can like submit to showcase so you have you maybe like if you get selected you got 10 to 12 minutes to put on stage what you would do on a college campus and so now the people that are there who are actively booking, who are over the budgets, will be there to say, hey, I think they would be good for my school. So from a from a uh, I guess an events coordinator perspective, if I'm in charge of events at a university and you just come to me, a random rapper, say I rap, why am I booking you? Because like you ain't bringing no people like we talk about homecomings. Like, who are you? Here's the thing. I think I think that you bake it into a program like the, the heart, the hardest thing to sell um, in the college market is rap. That's the hardest thing, right? Because there's so many rappers and the, and the thing people don't, in this particular space, which is sad, they might not necessarily care about a rapper until they actually pop, mm-hmm. right? But I think what's so clever and what's so dope is what's my story? You know what I'm saying? Why did I decide to be in the entertainment industry? What What is my platform? So if we can sell this platform as even, even like, a way of mental health, right? I release through creativity. Mm-hmm. Like, so this is how I get stress off. I write bars. You know what I'm saying? Then so I can teach somebody how to, like, if if you really, really nice at rapping, you might can teach somebody how to rhyme. Mm. They might not rhyme, they might not be nice like you, but you can tell your story about whatever you're going through at the time and how your pen help you get out of that mental space. So this is bigger than just an event. This can be like actually a program that's a class at, at, in the college. It can, it can be a it can be a program. Like I don't know classes yet, but I'm saying like like I can bake any program and get it across the finish line, mm. right? So if you tell me, hey, like, and this is just, this is just a real random example, but let's just say like for me personally, I lost my LB. You know what I'm saying uh, Thanksgiving night 2009, mm. right? So how did you get over that loss? You know what I'm saying? So if it was somebody who did music, hey, with with this loss, I started writing songs and I was able to get my thoughts on paper and it helped me, you know what I'm saying, get through certain things, right? So now you take that same platform and say, hey, I would love to tell my story on your campus of other people going through things or dealing with loss or dealing with, you know what I'm saying, uh, traumas in the home or whatever. This is how I got over it, mm-hmm. right? So it's bigger than just, hey, this is my CD, listen to my music, I want to perform on your campus. No, let's let's peel the layers back and talk about the the background and the story and how would your story help somebody overcome what they're going through. Okay, that's fire. I'm still trying to understand the money aspect of it because I know colleges are just like us and especially HBCUs. I love my HBCUs, but it just is what it is. They cheap. Yeah. So I'm coming to you, I'm selling this program, I'm pushing this program. Should I offer this for free or they... Cause I, what it make what's making them pay for just my story? You got you definitely need a need like a ex, you need your experience. You know what I'm saying? So you might do maybe two, maybe two like free platforms, like you know what I'm saying three uh programs or whatever. But like once you have that track record, then hey, it, it costs now. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Because once you got, I'll tell anybody once you got the footage, you good. Like once you got the footage that you impacted people, whether that's from a hands in the air, everybody lit or actually, yo, I really enjoy this person coming to my school and speaking to me. It touched me in this in this type of way. You, you golden. You know, it's funny. We're going to wrap up. But I think even that, I think you gave me that game. I kind of was doing a footage thing. I always was like into like recording yeah. and getting footage. But I, I remember one time you were saying something about hosting and like even outside of just recording the show. Going behind stage, asking people how did they enjoy the show? How did you enjoy the host? I, I still think, do that to this day. I think you. I was having a conversation with you, and you told me, and I was like, "Yo, that's genius. That's so." I fire. still do that to this day because, like, first person interviews, like, what's a better selling point than that? Like, it, and of course, you don't want to pay people nothing like that. But getting somebody to come on camera and say, "Yo, Mr. J Hill was the best host I saw at this school," mm. I believe it. 
Uh-huh. Like, bro, you had like you you took your time to come in here and and give me like my flowers on camera for the world to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like that, like all of that, all of that stuff is important. Once you once you have the footage, it's off to the races, and that's with uh-huh. anything. Once that's you hard. got that documentation, it's over with. That's hard because I remember at one point I was getting like the whole crowd to like say book Mr. J Hill, but now I'm thinking about like if you get. Not even the whole crowd. It's just five people to be like, yo, it was fire. Da, da, da. That's way right, better than just any videographer that I book. I tell them, yo, go in the crowd and find me ten people that want that care to say something about you know me hosting the show. Mm. That's fire, bro. Yeah, bro. Nah, this is hard, bro. Nah, nah. I, I I really appreciate you, man. I appreciate you for pulling up. I told you, you got my support, one hundred percent, man. I appreciate. Hey, bro, I'm not done. Who's uh who your who your top five hosts? Like just in the world, cause I I don't cause I don't think we have this conversation enough. Top five hosts, in and the I'm world. saying I'm saying just hosts. I'm not saying that they've been on TV. I'm mm-hmm. saying people that you've seen live rocking the stage. Who would be your top five? And I hate that we don't have this conversation, cause I'm like now people get lost in the sauce because nobody want to talk about it. One is the Keenan system. It is this guy from Baltimore? Okay. One of the, I mean, this guy. So when I first started hosting, it was a guy named King Flexer, right? Okay. Yeah, From yeah. DC. Yeah. King Flexer is like that, right? Mm-hmm. I like King Flexer. Yeah. But I saw Keenan come like after King Flexer, and I feel like I'm not going to say King Flexer only because I feel like Keenan is like a mix of King Flexer, like Tom's, whatever you want to say. It's kind of like the Kobe and, and, um, and Michael Jordan. Like, a lot okay. of people wouldn't put Kobe on top five because they remind him too much of uh, Jordan. I got you. That's how it is. So, I would say King Flexer and Keenan, but I'm I'm going to go with Keenan. Okay. That's my one. Keenan okay. system. This is in the order? No, no, no. Oh, okay. No, no, oh, no, you no. just saying. I'm just saying top five. Uh, okay. Um. Mm. Uh. It's a guy named Sway, I think. Okay. I know Sway. He used to do uh, Keith? Syracuse. Keith? I'm not sure. His name Keith. Um, Ooh, this is hard. Yeah. Because um, it's like, damn, I actually know hosts. Like, it's crazy. Uh, I can't say this guy, but I got to say this guy. DJ Quicksilver. Okay. Um, do I and and that, and that and that's no disrespect. I've never seen Quicksilver host yet. I haven't. I can't wait to see him. He has a show. Okay, that's what I can say. Like with all due respect, again, I'm giving people respect, but you gotta take whatever come with it too. Yeah, I feel like he has one of the best shows. Okay, I, I don't know about like versatility. With all due respect, mm-hmm. but if I had to take his show, mm-hmm. keep going with crazy. Anybody else? Yeah, his his show goes crazy. Okay, now, I don't know how versatile, but his show for sure. But so, but cause I say that because sometimes you hear somebody multiple times. It's like a comedian, yeah. right? You hear a set like just because you heard it, like, oh, he only did this one joke, like. Yeah. But if you can be unbiased and take yourself out of like your surroundings, yeah. if you take that show and put it in a new environment, okay, cold. Okay. Am I supposed to say celebrities too? Because I'm saying a bunch of local people, like. No, no, I'm I'm just saying whoever you seen rocking the stage. Okay. That you like, yo, they really do. Yeah. That. So I'm gonna say Quicksilver. I'm gonna say uh, Keenan System. I'm gonna say. Rocking the stage. Ah. Dang, bro. Mm, this is so good. i never seen uh, Fly Guy DC, but I just feel like he's definitely made a crazy impact. The things that he's done in Atlanta, okay. I've never seen. Okay, yeah. Um. Hmm. Hmm. This is good. I'm a. I throw you in there. I throw you in there. And five top five, bro. I was pretty good, bro. But I ain't gonna do that. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, let's not get it messed up. Like, I was good, bro. I'm all right. I'm all right. You like, nice. You nice. But um, I'm trying. A lot of energy. Uh, I don't know, bro. Um. I don't know. Definitely not saying Terrence J. With all due respect. 
Shout out to the bros. Shout out to the bros. <laughs> but uh, I don't know, bro. Um, I don't know. Sway? I guess. I guess. The guy, Eric. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Do I do I suppose to throw like celebrities in there? If you want to. Because like that, Steve that you, Harvey that is cool. Seen, that you've seen host live on stage. Oh, it's like events. Yeah. Because I'm like, TV shows is hard, bro. Like it, TV shows is hard. It's a different discipline. I'm yeah. talking about like, like I don't see. So I get my point in saying this. I don't think enough people or enough of us get like the credit that we deserve Facts. from like live hosting on stage. You made a face when I say Steve Harvey, but who you know quick on the feet. We talk about um Miss. No, no. No, 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 no. I, the only reason I said a face was because I'm talking about live on stage hosting. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying TV is a different discipline. You okay. got to be trained to do that. I don't, I don't think I'm ready for TV yet because because okay. improv skills, comedy chops, like being able to like little stuff, like being able to read, talk to the camera, this camera, that camera, that camera. Like it's a thing. So I'm not I'm not dissing. You know what I'm saying Steve Harvey at all. I only said that because still to this day, people don't understand how big of a moment Steve Harvey made. Um, that, Family that Feud. nah, nah, the Miss American Pageant yes. thing. I don't think people understand the backstory of that. Talk to me. I don't. I didn't even know it. So you know he missed. He he um he set the name wrong. Yeah. And he got hella backlash for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what happened was the producers got it wrong. Oh, and he just read it. And he and he said it. Twice, he said it. He said it multiple times. Like, yo, you sure? You sure? But what happened was he took the hit for that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that. And like to people like as a host. These are things that you got to do when you work. I know this. You know this yeah. because when, when we host and they give you, they mess up. Yeah. But to take that heat for it, right? Yeah. That's what you do as a host that so many people don't understand. I mm -hmm. think that was one. When I seen that, I'm like, yo, now nah, he's one of the greatest I, that ever I just it. I just did a show where um one of the fraternities like killed it and they got disqualified because of their video. Guess who had to say it on stage? You did. And I was like, you, I was like, I got to say it. He was like, yeah, you got to say it. And mm -hmm. I was like. Yeah. All right. And so they looking at me crazy, but I'm like, bro, come on, bro. Y'all know I'm I'm the one with the mic, so it is what it is. But I mean, so yeah, it'd be stuff like that. But yeah. nah, but I, I you just You give me your top five. What you mean? Hold up, where you going? What you talking about? What's up with you? <laughs> I would say my, I would say my top five. Darren Brand. Think he goes crazy. Um I'm Who is Darren Brand? All you gotta remind me. Uh Wildin' Out. So Dre is Big Baby. He from uh North Carolina AT. So like really put like you know what I'm saying like Aggie Pride on his back for sure. Okay. So Darren Brand is one of my um here's the thing. I'm gonna say Steve Brown. Like Steve Brown was the first person that I saw like really rocking like auditoriums. And, I don't like, know none of these people. Really? Mm. You gotta look them up, bro. Like if we talking live hosting. So Darren Brand, Steve Brown. Um Steve Brown is like who he was killing Claflin, like all of our events for homecoming before I came up. So he was the one that I got to watch that was like, I, I need that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, for real, for real. So, like, kind of gravitated towards some, chopped it up with him or whatever. And then it was kind of rocky in the beginning because, you know, we kind of, unfortunately, everybody subscribed to that can only be one. Mm. And I was like, bro, it ain't got to be like that, bro. Like, you nice at what you do, but I, I, think, I'm, I think I'm just as nice. I know you got more, more time in, but I, I'm, I'm a beast now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, Darren Brand, and we cool now, though, so ain't, ain't no issue. But Darren Brand, Steve Brown, I'm going uh, Young Trizzy. So Trizzy, my look, my uh, homie. Uh, yeah, the brush too, though. So. I know what you're talking about. The guy that work with you. Yeah, yeah. I like so, him. So my little brother, um, he he go crazy. Um, I got three right now. I ain't, I ain't going to put me in there. You can't put you and Trizzy because I'm assuming. Did he come up under you? Yeah. But... I mean the thing the thing the thing about Trizzy though is Trizzy was already hosting before he was doing Ox Court Wars. And okay. I just didn't I didn't know that. So okay. a lot of game, a lot of stuff. I'm like, yo, bro, do this, do that, do this. But he was already like like moving around, you know what I'm saying, in the city. So but like, but a beast though. I'd be like, Yeah, bro, you you're gonna be a better host than me one day, but it's a healthy competition. Mm. You know what I'm uh so I'm going, I need four. I'm not, I'm I'm not I'm not gonna put me in there only because like I just love helping people. So I think like this is a great opportunity to like shout people out. So I'm gonna go CDK. I think CDK is a beast. CDK on the mic. Y'all know who that is either, huh? Mm. Wow. I feel like all these people are like from down south or something. Uh, it says cause they like three of my guys was from yeah. up north too. So Young, younger cat. Um, but who else? Who would be who would be my fifth of live doing it?
in me. Hmm. So you want to put yourself <laughs> in me? Okay. So what makes what you think makes a a good host when it comes to these live events? I think that it's a difference between an announcer and a great host. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of times people come up and they announce. Like they read what's on the paper. You know what I'm saying? They um but a couple of things, right? You also have to produce a show. Mm -hmm. As a great host, you you're low key the producer too. Mm -hmm. So now when when you're waiting on team, like if you're doing, if you, let's say, let's just say step show for an example, like you got seven teams, right? It's your job to run to the back or check with your handler and be like, yo, this is the next team ready. You know what I'm saying? And if they not, how long do they need? They need three minutes. I have to take those three minutes and entertain the crowd. You know what I'm saying? And if I don't know that information, then I'm, I fail because what the DJ just going to rock? Mm -hmm. You're just going to rock until, you know what I'm saying, until they're ready for the next team? Or is it going to be silent? It ain't going to be silence. You know what I'm saying? Once you touch the mic, it shouldn't be no more silence after the, you know what I'm saying, throughout the show. Yeah, and if they tell you three minutes, they really mean like six. Yeah. They but be finessing. But that's the thing. Like, you like you got to you gotta be in the know of every, like every little intricacy of the show, mm -hmm. right? And you got to also control the flow of the show, too. So it's you being the expert in your field because... You ever had, I know you had, but you ever, you know what I'm saying, went to a step show and they give you a booklet of judges' bios? Mm hmm And it's like. I'm not reading this, bro. It's like, come on. Like, like honestly, I, I, I respect that y'all are, are all here and y'all all accomplished a lot of things, but let's just think about the attention span of the audience. So, like, in the most political, you know what I'm saying, and nice way to be like, hey, can we cut this down? Mm -hmm. and, and, and you got to do that. I got to check with the judges and be like, yo, is it cool to cut this down? What's super important to you? Because, you know what I'm saying, the audience probably really don't care that you, you know what I'm saying, is a new, are newlywed with, with four kids and a dog. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so it's certain things that as the expert in your field that you got to know to make sure the, the show flows as smooth as possible, right? And I think that just going to, going to extra mile and being like, okay, cool, I want to provide my input so that we make sure the show is going to be fire versus you just giving me a script and telling me what to do. So, so I, I let last thing. So even early on, like I would ask schools when they would book me, Hey, just give me the order of the teams and let me go. Mm. Oh, we can't do that. I have, we have a whole script that we worked on. Trust me, give me the order of the teams and let me ride. Tell me what time you want it to be over and I will I will schedule it in my mind. Mm -hmm. And I will and I will make up different sets. I will make sure that I'm not doing too much to where it's like, man, come on, bro. Like you prolonging the show, but not doing too little to where now the person that's booking you was like, what am I paying them for? So it's a very happy medium. <clears throat> I think and a part of this came from me like hosting the clubs. I think to be a great host, it takes you have you you, you gotta be almost a, a good DJ. Mm -hmm. You got to know the music. You got to know, you got to be good at um, geographic. What is it? Yeah, the geographic, right? That's like. Like knowing the different regions of yeah, different yeah, people. Yeah. yeah. I think you got to know your regions, know your space, and know the place you at. You at because mm -hmm. you got to be able to read the room. Uh, if I'm in, um, I don't know, I ain't hold on. Like if I'm in Atlanta, I know the schools that's in Atlanta. Yeah. I know. Uh, what is their, they might have a tri area, like a tri-state area. What is that? What Like, what's the, the closest state that, that reps it that, that people, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. it, that's super important. Like, if I'm, yeah. in, I'm in Baltimore, I know it's DMV. I'm, we might have some, but I also know we got some New York people up here, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you want, uh, not Atlanta, but if you want, like, uh, South Carolina or, I don't know, um, in the Midwest, it might not be so many people from D.C. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you yeah, got to. Yeah. You gotta know these things. I think that's super important. Research, uh, yeah. Research the DJ, knowing the show. So preparation. I say preparation is probably number one. Mm -hmm. I feel like, um, and me, I ain't gonna lie. I think research. Let's go with preparation. A lot of people, a lot of hosts that I come up with, um, they they pride themselves on like they don't look at nobody else. Man, I study everybody. Study everybody. Like knowing how to put a show together. I remember seeing Will Smith do a show on a, like a uh, like I don't know if it was a TV show, but I remember him doing his set. Where they did um in West Philadelphia, born, but I remember how he did it, and I remember I copied that and did it in the show, and it was fire because I was in Philly. Like mm -hmm. it was like how he did it. It was like a call and response, mm -hmm. and then he went and then he did the uh. But all of this is a part of like that's research. Like mm -hmm. if you got a job, you want you know what I'm saying put the time in. Yeah, I think that's what makes a great host. Um, and pacing too. Pacing, yes, right. I think uh pacing, and and like you said, like knowing knowing what to add and take away, because like 
And if you prepare, all oh, this is a lot of prep, most of this is preparation because I might get a, a a list of um panelists or judges, right? And if you, I'm trying to get it early so I can memorize it. Mm -hmm. Or I'm gonna write the notes on my phone. So when I'm introducing the the, the, the guests, I'm hyping them. Yeah. But I'm getting the, the main points. I might not ask them. You you ask them. I might not yeah. ask them though. But I'm gonna get the main points. I'm like yo da 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 from Baltimore. Yo, and he, I know you going crazy. So make some, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I meet all. The, I make it a point to meet all of the judges before, and mm -hmm. I get them to t tell me your name so that I'm not reading it. Right? Tell me your tell me how, your name how it's supposed to sound, mm -hmm. and I have to write it myself. Yeah. So I can write it to say okay, I would say that like this. Like somebody's name might be Ariel, but they might spell it, you know what I'm saying, weird. And I'm like, okay, I ha I need to write Ariel the way that I would say it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yep. And exactly. then so so and then a couple of things, it's just for me, man, is is energy and flexibility, right? Mm -hmm. You gotta have energy at the show. Quick you on got, your feet. You gotta be quick on your feet and you gotta and you gotta be flexible to whatever's happening, right? Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, like I can get the DJ and say, I right, DJ, rock out for a second, let's figure it out, right? But I would rather not do that. But how do you even go? It's like, I think this helped from the club. Like, how do we go into that, though? Because, like, you can, it's a difference between, like, yo, DJ, let's rock out for a second. And they play the music as, a, like, a, a, a chill moment. Mm. Or we can we can trick the audience into playing music for a second. Like, we about to do it for, uh, I don't know, um, Jersey in the building. So you're saying, like, different sets. Yeah. I mean, I mean it's, <laughs> like, here's the thing. Like, you. So you finesse them, like, nah, you want to play a bunch of Jersey music. Yeah, but, but you got you got to set it up with the DJ. Like, that. Like that's also a requirement before I do shows. Facts. Like I need to connect with your DJ, and then you know, and every everybody got they hot DJ on campus, right? So it's like, what they, what do you need to connect with me for? And I and I tell them no ego at all. I'm like, bro, like the way that I do my show is not a separate responsibility of DJ. I play the you play the music, you do the jokes. I'm like, nah, we're gonna work together the whole time because my show just just you know. For, go off for energy So we end this together Like I'm never gonna Embarrass you If you ain't got a cue ready I'm never gonna be like Come on DJ What you doing I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that We both gonna look crazy mm -hmm. So let's figure out How do we come together To make an enjoyable show For the audience mm -hmm. It ain't about you Getting your rocks off And me getting my rocks off Separately I want people to leave And be like Yo that was a great show mm -hmm. Like and that's even From the teams and everything I never want people To be like Well the show was cool, but the host saved it. Like, nah, bro, I want to be a part of great shows, period. You know what I'm saying? And so yeah. that's just my thing. I think one of my last one is funny because I just I sucked at this part was I think if you have all of that and you're a comedian, I hate comedians. Like I'm a hater of comedians. Cause I feel like that's <laughs> an automatic like cheat code. Like you could just say some jokes and like that's yeah. just cheat code. But I mean, but sometimes a lot, a lot of that stuff is like impro improvisational stuff, though. You know what I'm saying? That's like op observational jokes. That's why I wasn't fired doing stand up because I never really like practiced the discipline of stand up enough. I would mm -hmm. just be on some like, oh, look at look at Buddy and the or look at Shorty. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And like and and kind of get quick stuff off like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think that it's just. Being willing to try new things, right? No, facts. But nah, but yeah, man, host, hosting is it's hosting fun, is man. fire, and you can and you can definitely like pay your bills from just hosting. Because that was one thing that um, I was under the impression before that I had to be a comedian or I had to be an actor who happened to host. Mm. Like my OG was like, bro, nobody's booking just hosts. Like people are booking a comedian who ha who can host or an actor who can host. And I'm like, nah, but bro. that like, was I'm true. Literally a host. I hated. There was a couple niggas that I hated. I'm good friends with now. Like shout out to my guy, Mr. Bankshot. Yeah. I hated niggas like him. Who else I was hating on when I was younger? Uh, I wasn't shout hating out on to you Bankshot. because you was good, right? Yeah. I was hating on who else? Who else? it was like it was like a couple like superstar Greek guys. I forgot their names. I, I wish I could tell you. I was hating on you though. I used to hate them because they was like lit and the school was just calling like just the host. And yeah. like, like I remember I did a show with Desi Banks. Yeah. And Desi Banks, like, yo, how do we, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's my dog. Like, but I remember having to help him because he's like, yo, yeah. how do we do this? And, and I'm like, yeah. I could have took this whole bag, you know what I'm saying? But they, <laughs> what happened was that's when they got that was later on in the, down the line when they got smart. Yeah. They started booking the host and the and the that's special what I was guests. About to, that's what I was about to say. They wasn't doing that at first, though. Don't miss out on your bag, but brother. I'm they it's, wasn't doing that at it, first. I'm gonna tell you, it's, it's been it's been plenty of it's been plenty of like special celebrity guests or whatever that I've worked with that I'm like, bro, like like do this. I'm gonna say this, you say this, right? And but I, I ain't 
And it's almost like ghostwriting in a sense, right? Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, we just want them to have a lit show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We just want them to be like, man, I would love to bring them back. You know what I'm saying? But it wasn't like that at first. At first, I remember like t Works, they was to the book all of the, the <laughs> dope. Uh, Shout out to t Yeah. I, I, I put names <laughs> on it. They used, to, they used to book all the lit like Instagram niggas, yeah. right? To the host yeah. the show. And I'm like, man, I'm, I'm really going to host. Like, they ain't going to just I'm, go up there. I'm really showing out out yeah. here. I'm, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm really like that. I used to be hating. Like, yeah. this, looking back on it, that's why I could joke about it now. But like, I used to be like, man, fuck these niggas. But, you know. Nah, I mean, but I, I, honestly, bro, like, like it's, it's going to be like that because a lot of times people, because they think that, they think that the, because people are lit, it's going to turn into ticket sales. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. But I think that, getting back to the quality of the show is is very very important so that was kind of that was my selling point early on i ain't had the followers i ain't had you know what i'm saying the eyes on me but i was like if you want a great show i'm going to give you a great show mm-hmm. i ain't gonna get up here and 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 play and play videos and nothing i'm gonna give you <laughs> i'm just gonna give you a great show here above you see my instagram video watch this y'all watch this <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, I'm, I'm I'm gonna get on the stage and I'm gonna rock out and everybody gonna have a good time. But then I'm I ain't even gonna stay on the stage. I'm gonna run around the auditorium and everything. Like nah. I'm just I, I just I just really pro- I I had to put so much emphasis in hosting because that's all I had. That's all you had, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. It's like, bro, like you you not gonna know me from a TV show. You not gonna know me from at the time a hundred thousand followers was good to have. Like I ain't got a hundred, I ain't got fifty thousand followers. And I At the promise, time, a hundred likes was lit. Come on, man! But I promise you, if I hit your stage, you're not gonna forgive me. Mm-hmm. So. No, man. I pre- I'm glad you asked me that, man. Yeah, I need that clip. I like that, man. I appreciate you pulling up for the, for the people that don't know. Let them know how to follow you. All that good stuff. Yeah, man. So J Dukes, nineteen eleven, uh, Instagram, uh, TikTok, uh, also comedian J Dukes on uh, Facebook, man. So, and then we got another company called Beyond the Stage, to where we uh, book. Artists, speakers, uh, comedians for colleges as well. Oh, uh, please, please, please follow Ox Court Wars at Ox Court Wars Live. So. so, what about this um this little thing we supposed to do at North Carolina? Something it's supposed to be an interview or something like what happened? Uh, it ain't come through. J Hill, J Hill podcast. But we still pitching. Come on, bro. Don't don't. don't don't give up on just one one that fell flat. Nah, I'm just all good. I'm joking, man. Ah, J Hill, J Hill podcast. J Dukes. It's a wrap. We out.